welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I have another 64 player single elimination cube draft step two on the way to Vegas. Everybody in this event went 4 and 0 in a cube draft league sometime in the past. The people who go 6 and 0 in this event or the person who goes 6 and 0 in this event joins the top 8 this weekend and the person who wins that draft gets to draft a vintage cube and keep the cards at Magicon Vegas later this year. The prizes for this event are nothing. First gets invited to the Saturday playoff. Second is the alternate if that person doesn't show up. One play point. Nothing for being here. Nothing for third. This is a all-in situation where you just got to win. Cube draft tends to bring out some big feelings in people. And I'm going to try to say very politely, because I understand people are excited and want to share their thoughts and stuff, that... As you watch this video, and if you are tempted to leave a comment, I do not care what Louis Scott Vargas would have taken out of the pack, or Caleb Durward, or Numat the Nummy. I respect all these people, wonderful magic players, excellent cubers, but I'm here doing my thing and getting the same comment nine times that LSV would have taken the polluted Delta over the reanimate or whatever. I don't care. I'm going to take the reanimate. Cube is as much art as it is science. And there is a bunch of different things you could do, a bunch of different lanes you can get in. If you have a super tight Oro stack, it's fine. If the mana is just eight planes, eight mountains, you don't need to take Arid Mesa over Selfless Spirit or Luris or like whatever. Like if you need a thing in your curve more than you need mana fixing, it is okay to take that, even if Luis takes fetches highly. I don't always play perfectly. Cube is not my main format, but also I think I have a pretty reasonable understanding of what I want to do, what works for me, and I'm going to draft my way. All that said, <laughs> let's draft. The first pack is here. No power. Sad start. Blightsteel Colossus. There was a time where I would not be afraid to pack one pick one that, but I think that time has passed. Here we've got Marsh Flats. <laughs> Shout out LSV and my talk beforehand. You know, leading on a fetch lane is fine. Mana Leak. Hyper Efficient Counterspell. In the cube, I like being blue in general. Flame Slash, Oliphant. I mean, I'm not going to pack with pick one Oliphant. Flame Slash will wheel if nobody is in red. Like, Flame Slash is great, cheap interaction, but it also does tend to wheel. Grief. I rarely want to spend a card on this unless my deck ends up heinously broken, and I'm not going to pack with pick one of four drop with the intent of spending four mana on it unless it's like the one ring. I am going to take Mana Leak here. A Displacer Kitten would be nice, though. Okay, here we've got Caracas, which is a monster in the cube. Insano Role Player. Chandra, quintessential red payoff in the mid-range red decks. Baragoyf is great, but it's mostly just stats at the end of the day, and I don't want to take a creature that's just there for its stats this early. Chrome Mox is excellent. And will make any deck I play. For me, this is between Caracas and Chrome Mox. Whether I want this role player or this accelerator. Like Chrome Mox is a bad top deck later, where Caracas could be the only thing that saves you. Chrome Mox is better in the average opening hand. I am gonna take Caracas here. Savannah, Bill, Robber, Glory, Cryptic Coat, Glimmer Lens. It's a little early to take Blood Chief Thirst. And this is a spot where none of the cards in the pack are better than a land. I'm not against taking fixing. It's just specifically in all of my recent drafts, the comments that pile up of, you know, why don't you take fixing? Like my decks were great. I lost in the finals of both of my last two drafts, and it was because I punted, not because my deck was bad. You don't need fixing if your spells are just in colors that you can support. But this pack, uh, Cryptic Coat, is the only thing I would consider over Watery Grave, but I'm going to take the Grave. I like Esper just fine. Reanimator, I think, is the best thing in the cube to be doing. 
who's in my pod. I'm playing against Scarista Amparo. I don't know who that is. I don't recognize any of these names. Okay. These 64 player playoffs are full of like pros and magic online grinder gods and stuff. And it's a bit of a relief not to see just like three Hall of Famers in this pod. I love discard. Cheap interaction is great. Stern scolding. Also cheap interaction. I don't think I like it better than Inqu Inquisition. Lauren revealed is fixing. Glory bringer. We've shipped flame slash Chandra to the left. I don't really want to make my stake on red after sending those signals over a glory bringer. Sanders lounge, another fixer. I like this lawyer interview a lot, but I like inquisition more. Okay. The first pack with good cards in it, we've got path to exile to fairy snapcaster burst lightning are all cards that I would be happy to have in most decks. I currently have a blue card, a black card, a white land, and a blue-black land. That doesn't mean I'm Esper. It doesn't mean I'm really anything yet. Path to Exile is just the best removal in the pack here. If I end up blue-black with like a Caracas in the deck, I'm going to wish I took Teferi on the splash rather than Path, but I think I want Path here. Mystic Confluence and Counterspell. Okay, I'm going to take this as a signal that blue is open in either one of these cards could be first pickable in a medium strength pack and this is pick six i'm going to take mystic confluence i love counterspell but mystic confluence is can catch you up when you're behind or slam the door when you're ahead where counterspell only maintains parity or keeps you ahead if you're there yeah confluence on the top end and now we have something of a color identity strix and paragon I'm not going to take Echo of Eons. I have no way to set it up. No synergy with it at the moment. A bunch of green and lands adjacent cards here. This is just Strix. Starting to take shape as blue-black with potentially a white splash. We got Caracas and Path. I'd probably play Caracas just as a colorless land that bounces legends even if I have no white cards in my deck. That does mean that Snapcaster Counterspell just went through me in pick six, pick seven. Hopefully nobody downstream gets ideas on my blue deck, but I'm hooking them two out of the three packs and they're just shipping to me the other way. It really is going to hurt them more than it hurts me if they decide to be blue. True Name Nemesis Nethergoyf. I like True Name Nemesis. This is actually the specific card that people are most mad about. I took True Name Nemesis over a Bloodstained Mire in one of my recent drafts where I was a base blue deck and didn't need a Bloodstained Mire but needed a three drop. And I find myself in the same position now. Displacer Kitten came back. Ottawara came back. Displacer Kitten is huge on spec. If I get into any like remotely blue artifact related nonsense, if I get like one playable Planeswalker we're cooking, Ottawara will make the deck no matter what. I'm willing to spec on the big engine. It's early in the draft still. Got two whole packs to see. Yeah, like I don't think True Name Nemesis is a premium vintage cube magic card you know like i'm not like slamming it on the scale of minskin boo but this is a very difficult to kill three drop the interaction for that is very slim and you got to kill your opponent somehow pop aragoyf on the wheel that's a good sign i called that out pick two and now i got it pick 10 snapcaster is probably good enough that people would just hoover it up even if they're not really planning on playing it but if i do wheel that somehow we are just going off savannah proving ground proving ground is black base just a color i play savannah is not a color i play but it is untapped i'm not taking any of these other cards i'll just put proving ground in my pile just in case a proving ground versus savannah i might have a white splash but i'm nowhere near green whereas proving ground is just a black land and then gives me a source of red or green if i find a card i need to cast with those ramming up talent Talisman, Renin 6. I don't really like any of these cards. I guess I'll take the Talisman. Oh wow, I could play two of these three pretty reasonably. I like Curtains. It's an early blocker that becomes interaction and a reasonable size body. Again, like with four cards left in the pack is when I want to see that, but I am happy to get it. Not currently interested in this Talisman, but that does oh, give me a second red pip. Unearth this late is cool. Unearth is not reanimate, not even close, but I do have 
three, four targets for it already. And root wall is straight to the sideboard. Let's see some power. Give me a time walk. Okay, we found a Mox Pearl, a Misty Rainforest, a Ponder. And I'm obviously taking the Mox here, but what do I want on the wheel? Ponder in blue was not... We got that Mystic Confluence Wheel Displacer Kitten. Uh, blue might be open at this table. We're not getting Misty back because the whole world is Luis build on Fetchlands. Sahili could make my deck. Ponder's really the only card in this pack I want back, though. All right, Mox Pearl in the, the pile. Helps my White Splash and also is just power. Love it. Tundra, Psychic Frog, Liliana, Spell Pierce, Life Death, Emperor of Bones, Forensic Gadgeteer. I think Psychic Frog is just an insane busto. And I would love to see Liliana, Spell Pierce, Emperor, Tundra, or Life Death back. There's five cards in this pack I would love to just shove in my deck, but I'm taking Psychic Frog. I could even put Guardian Scale Lord at the top of my curve as just like that five drop because Teferi didn't come back in my Esper deck. Volcanic Island, Dam, Grizzlebrand, Spelljacker, Miscalculation. I cannot support Mox Opal at this time. Prismatic Endings on the Splash, where Miscalculation is just a core color and a solid card. I would love to see back dam or spelljacker out of this pack i'm just not in the grizzle brand space at all whole pack without any signs of a reanimator shoving monsters into play like i said i think is the best thing you can do in the cube but having just like a grizzle brand in your sideboard of this deck with no sign that reanimation is remotely open i could also play touch the spirit realm or prismatic ending or priest if they come back but i'm taking miscalc for now subtlety dak faden not really a Relic of Sauron deck, unfortunately. I love when I get to play that card. It's so sick. Dak can be cast off Zeator's Proving Ground that I have no way to find. I think this is just subtlety. Just another way to interact, maintain tempo. In subtletying an opponent who's being hit with Psychic Frog is insane. Or Trune Nemesis, kind of little blue-black cheap counters. Demir tempo thing going on here. Kaito Shizuki, Fatal Push, Cryptic Command. I think it's fatal push if blue is open or if even if someone else is just like kind of near blue we could reasonably get cryptic back just blue 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 is such a commitment i'd be happy with cryptic kaito celestial colonnade or him to tarak back but i'm taking the cheap interaction by picking up this mox and having kitten already to fairy time raveler if i find it does have an infinite combo in my deck is something to be cognizant of Time Warp, Virtue, Frantic Search, Consider, Blue-White Talisman. I think it's Virtue for me here. I'm not a reanimator deck for Frantic Search. Five's a lot to ask on a Time Warp. And again, cheap interaction. And if the game goes to seven mana, this is also a win con. Consider, Consider and Virtue, I think, are the two that I would reasonably be interested in here. But let me just get another removal spell in my deck. Phantasmal Image, I'm a fan. Fire Covenant, I'm also a fan. So Fire Cov would introduce a red card. I, I currently have one white card and two white sources. I would have zero red cards, but one red source. I could just take Image. Revoker's also fine, but Image could become like my own Strix, my own Frog, my own Concealing Curtains, my own True Name. Like I'm actually... Frequently you take image and blue decks to copy your opponent's thing, but my deck is full of dope creatures right now. I'm doing that. And if my opponent happens to attract or Atali me, I can do it too. Fractured Identity, Crab Abomination, Show and Tell, Fairy Mastermind. Okay, I'm going to resist every boomer urge that I have and not take Fractured Identity because Fairy Mastermind in a deck with this many counter spells. Having a flash threat to deploy. Like if you just leave up counter magic and your opponent doesn't cast a spell, you've wasted a turn. And I want to put them in a spot where if you don't cast something into miscalculation, I will deploy Fairy Mastermind or Malcolm or some other flash thing. And I'm going to take Mastermind here. And I'm going to be sad to see Fractured Identity go, but I am feeling good about that decision. I think Phantasmal Image should get flash if it's going to copy a flash creature. I need a flavor judge. As predicted, nothing we really want came back. 
Saheli could be just a sit and play value engine as I counter spells. She poops out friends. I could take Wheel of Fortune. I do have two red cards or red sources. And there's some universe where maybe I open a Hall Breacher pack three and suddenly we're interested or a Bowmaster or open Doomsday pack three and I want Oracle. I think the wheel on spec is better than the, the Sahili. The Sahili generally want to be dumping out a bunch of high velocity spells. She's really good in the artifact deck where you're feeding your own Tolarian Academies and Urza constructs and stuff. In Life Death Soul Guide Lantern. I've called out Life Death as a card I wouldn't be sad to see back. I'm nowhere near Reanimator. I do already have an Unearth. I have a bunch of cool creatures in my deck. I could also just take Soul Guide Lantern as a sideboard card for the Reanimate deck. And I think I am going to do that, which I don't think I've ever passed a Reanimate twice in the in the cube. Like normally I'm, I'm in. That's the best thing to be doing, but. Life Death only gets your graveyard, and my creatures simply aren't that powerful. We got the Jacker back. We're jacking. That's awesome. Jacker and Mystic Confluence now. I have two cards that if I just pass with five mana up and I'm at parity or ahead on board, I'm going to win. Both of those have that effect on the game. And we're in exactly the spot that I described. Oh, check this out. Blood Crypt. It's on the wheel. If you find a lane, you could get this fixing late. This is this cast Wheel of Fortune. What if I get that Fire Cove back? That would be so messed up. But I was just going to say, we're in the spot I described in the, the pre-draft conversation where if you just have a two-color deck full of reasonable cards, you don't need eight non-basic lands to cast them. I would be fine registering this deck. Here we go. Cryptic Command on the wheel. I'd be fine registering this deck with just Watery Grave and 15 basic lands. But now I have a whole pack to find you know, Dark Slick Shores or whatever, one fetch land, you know, where it, whereas like if I had taken Marsh Flats, pack one, pick one over Mana Leak, then I'm not in this blue lane and my deck looks totally different. Brewmaster is more graveyard hate, that's cool. I have two of those now. This might even be main deckable. I'm not excited about it, but we'll see where the, the draft lands. I got my red package, my white package, and notable sideboard cards over here. Liquor Wisp straight to the sideboard. Kind of light on three drops. I'm kind of light on flash creatures. Those are two things I'd like to solve. And while I would be fine registering 15 basic lands, I would also be fully accepting of some blue black duels. Archon of Cruelty, balance. I am not a balance deck. Balance on the splash in my creature deck. That's not how that works. Palantir of Orthonk is a bit of a heater. I'm not really using my graveyard, but this is a problem the opponent needs to solve. There's no fixing for me here. I think Palantir is better than Preacher of the Schism if I'm going to spend three mana on a threat. Preordain would be fine for my deck, but I don't need one mana cantrips. I need three drops. I identified the gap in my curve right here uh, before we even saw the pack, and then we get served up a three drop that is solid. Let's do it. Probably even going to wheel that Preacher of the Schism, honestly. Tamio, holy smokes, and Mind Twist. It's Tamio. I like Collective Brutality. I like Thieving Skydiver. I like Mind Twist, but Tamio is just a powerful thing to get going early. It's a card advantage engine early on. Zero three is actually a massive blocker against a lot of the early threats in the, the format. And there are three cards I'd be happy to wheel here. Let's go, Tamio. The best cards in this pack are Bone Crusher Giant by a mile. Carnage Interpreter is good, and I am black, and I do need three drops. However, that card does not play well with the plan of getting on board and holding up counter spells. You have to discard your hand when you play it. I have Proving Ground, Blood Crypt, and Talisman if I want it to cast Bone Crusher Giant. Smuggler's Copter is also fine. I think Bone Crusher Giant is enough better than all these cards that I want to take it on spec. Okay, here's Malcolm. I mentioned Flash Creatures and 3-drops are the things I'm trying to fill out in my deck. Malcolm's great. Restless Vents, hoping to wheel that. That's another red-black duel. I'm very close to playing Bone Crusher Giant. I don't think I'm playing Wheel of Fortune. 
I'm one red black dual land or blue red dual land away from playing Bone Crusher Giant or one fetch land, just some way to get red. Uh, Malcolm, here we go. And I have plenty of playables without this package, but I would love if it came together. And Polluted Delta, never worried. Polluted Delta gets me Blood Crypt, Watery Grave. Yeah, Polluted Delta adds Bone Crusher Giant to the deck. In this pack, there's basically nothing for me. I would be actually a pretty reasonable Dark Star Augur deck. It's just a flying creature. I can unearth it, and my curve is relatively low. But it's Blue to Delta for sure here. Also means I don't need to play Talisman. Delta can get Proving Ground. There we go. That package is built out. Deathrite Shaman, Flame of Anor, Luris. I think I'm actually a really good Luris deck. Not as companion, just as creature. I mentioned I need three drops. I've mentioned that I have this low curve full of creatures multiple times throughout the draft. So I have seven high value things that I can cast with Luris already. Playing Luris might even main deck the Soul Guide Lantern because then I could draw a card every turn. I like Flame of Anor, but on the splash, it's a lot worse than just this card. Okay, Hazel's Brewmaster officially not making the deck if I'm main decking Soul Guide Lantern, which may or may not happen. I'm just thinking about stuff right now. Caracas can also be used to protect Tamio, Malcolm, or Luris from removal. Underworld Breach Cataxian Probe. I'm not doing much in the way of breaching. You don't need to go infinite with Underworld Breach. You can just like breach and cast Ancestral Recall or Time Walk twice in a normal game, but I don't have those cards. Probe versus Cutdown. I think I want Probe. That sounds just slightly too conditional, though I do think it's good, but I have a bunch of 0 4s, 0 3s, and cheap interaction for the early stuff that Cutdown would kill. And if my opponent has something like Guardian Scale Lord, I want to be able to see it come in with Probe and build a plan. Path to Exile at the moment is going to be a sideboard card. Unless I. There was a Hallowed Fountain going around. If I wheel that somehow, Path to Exile is right in the main deck. Unearth probably not making the deck right now. Okay, this is the last. New pack I'm going to see. Thundering Falls is Fetchable Red. Dracosaur on the double. A terrible upheaval deck. No more lies on the splash. How good am I as a Dark Ritual deck? Probably not very. Got Dark Ritual Barrowgoyf. And then it's a 1-2. I don't think I'm a Ritual deck. It's probably just Thundering Falls. I honestly might even take the Thundering Falls here if it was Hedge Maze. Just a fetchable surveil on color land. But the fact that it is actually a splash duel for my Bone Crusher Giant bonus. Silent Clearing casts Path to Exile. Preordain came back around. At this point, I just want to make sure I have a good flow of good cards. My three drop slot filled out nicely. I'm not going to cast Grave Titan. I'm not going to cast Balance. Preordain, get in my belly. I don't think Displacer Kitten made the deck. We just didn't find anything to do with it. It's like resolve Spelljacker once, then hold up a second instant, and then jack a second spell. It's the best thing we're doing with Kitten. Okay, Skydiver on the wheel. Finding your lane early. Blue was clear basically the whole time. Skydiver's a sick thing to cast with Luris. Soul Cauldron can round out my graveyard hate package. I actually have a lot of graveyard hate in this deck. Uh, Sam plus Caracas, but I'm not actually a white deck. These things are all on the sideboard right now. I don't remember exactly where it is, but we're approaching the Hallowed Fountain pack. If it's gone, it's gone. I don't really expect to see it. Because that Teferi Hero of Dominaria didn't come back. Snapcaster didn't come back. Somebody's probably in a spot where they want a Hallowed Fountain late in the pack. None of these cards are making my deck. Let's put Vampire Hex Mage in my sideboard. I might cast that. I could even loop it with Luris if my opponent has a bunch of Planeswalkers or something. But it's a Super creative sideboard card. Nightstone and Weakstone actually does pop with the cat. Not playing any of these. All right, so threats, card card advantage and selection, interaction, or discard and counter spells, removal. I like this. These are good numbers. Going to have to cut some of these cards, but we'll figure that out in deck build. And Neshoba Brawler straight to the sideboard as my final pick. Okay, we saw Life Death Wheel but we didn't look at a single other reanimation card. We saw Grizzlebrand pick pack two, pick two, but didn't even see a monster like float by. There might've been a Torsten in the draft actually, but I certainly didn't see an Atali or an Atraxa or anything. Like maybe someone's in that. I saw basically zero white or red cards at any point. 
So the, that flame slash Chandra glory bringer signal I sent to my left was picked up by someone. Pack one, Renin six and Ramanap excavator were just the la two of the last three cards in a pack together. Though so, like nobody was in on lands early, but we did see an exploration later. If anyone just sort of scooped those up on the wheel, they might have ended up with a deck. Okay, this is twenty five cards. Do I main deck? The Soul Guide Lantern is question number one. Do I need Phantasmal Image? Question number two. Can I cast Crypto Command? Question number three. I think the answer is yes to that, but I'm just going to... When we need one or two cuts here, we're just putting everything on notice. That could be remotely suspicious. It feels weirdly disingenuous as I make these like creature, non-creature piles here to separate Mystic Confluence from Smir Smirking Spelljacker. They are very similar. Either one could be in both piles. This affects creatures. This is a creature. This counter spells. This is a counter spell. I don't know. That, that's completely irrelevant. I'm just... My brain triggered when I saw... When I felt myself separating these two, I feel like they belong together. I'm going to leave them together. They belong together. They love each other. This is more of a counter spell than a creature. I found the correct pile for them. Okay, so my mana. I've got... Red just covered. Ended up with four red sources for a single red card, single red pip in the deck. All of them are on color dual lands that line up with Polluted Delta. Caracas is just going to be a colorless land in the deck, just as Mox Pearl is going to be just Mox Crystal. And I don't need a mountain. I don't need a plains. Right now, I, I still need those cuts. I'm just starting to put my mana together. I like to see the lands that I'm confident that I'm playing before I do other stuff. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue sources. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black sources. I definitely am bluer than I am black, so that's already one change. I could cut image and lantern and go 16 lands plus Mox Pearl. I have Pro Preordain Tamio. Miscalculation can cycle, Proving Ground can cycle, Psychic Frog draws cards, Malcolm loots, Mastermind digs, Palantir digs. I have a lot of card selection here at cheap, so I think playing more lands is fine. If I cut these two, pop in one of each basic, that's nine blue, eight black, with my two colorless bonus sources. Yeah, really the... The last debate in my mind is, am I going to be able to cast Crypto Command when I want to versus is Soul Guide Lantern good enough as a Luris cantrip to put in the deck even if my opponent is not playing graveyard stuff? I think we play Crypto Command in the main and we stay aware of this massive graveyard hate package that we have. Just three additional dedicated graveyard hate cards on top of my deck full of counterspells and discard already. I think I took Path over Snapcaster, which, having seen the whole draft run out, I would, of course, rather have Snapcaster than a Path Exile in my sideboard. But at the time, it was early in the draft. I was like pick four or five. And Path is just, I think, a better card. It wasn't even a black deck yet at that point. No regrets. I have Hex Mage if they have a bunch of Bladeswalkers. Displacer Kitten, Mightstone, if they're some sort of grindy, larger creature deck. If Might Stone and Weakstone ever kills two creatures with Kitten, the game is over. If we see like Bone Horde Dracosaur or Glorybringer, things like that, we know there is a big red deck at the table. I could see Might Stone and Weakstone just being good enough to bring in. I don't think Unearth is better than any of the cards I'm already playing. And this is going to be my deck. Let's do it. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw in round one. I have two cantrips, one that's free. 
I have two draws. I get to see three cards before I miss a land. I have in my deck nine blue sources. I'm going to see about one tenth, one eleventh of my deck. The Cryptic and Kovlitz feel like we're already down two cards, but Psychic Frog coming down early would be sick. I'm going to keep this. Risk it for the biscuit. This is actually a fun theory conversation, which generally comes down to generational lines of people playing in the early 2000s and before, like myself, are like, yeah, it's seven hit cards, just, you know, let it ride. It's going to be better than six cards. And Zoomers are like, good five, better than mid seven. I've kept this hand. Let's hope I find a blue source quickly. We've got a Plains and a Mox Ruby off a of Malda six. So they have four cards in their hand right now. It'll push, likely to be good here. I'm going to probe first. If they mana tithe my probe, whatever, good job. But if I draw an island, I want to cast Tamio. Okay, Burst Lightning does not kill Tamio. They have Lelia next turn. I can't answer any of these creatures, actually, so I'm just going to play Tamio. Yeah, they're going to cycle Timeless Dragon. Find a Plains. Okay, so they don't have a Plateau. They are relying on this Mox Ruby for red right now, which is their entire hand. Lelia is a spooky one. I will not be blocking. They flipped a planes. That's gone forever. A clue token can get me revolted in the future. If they kill Tamio somehow, that could get me revolted in the future. If I draw Polluted Delta, we're good to go. Whoa, look at this. Yuri off the top and clear the Tamio. Okay. That makes Psychic Frog kind of insane. Okay, yeah, they are all the way in. Oh, baby. Give me that. Or just a little Baleful Strix. Good thing you stopped me from getting a clue token, though. I can see what they were going for with Angie's Ravager. Is going to discard the hand anyway. Council's Judgment. Well, can't interact with that. If they're running this hot, they deserve it. But okay, that's gone. Lelia, still answerable. They're still playing off one card. They flipped Flame Slash. We found out who got that. I can also just pitch Subtlety, which will turn on Fatal Push. I'm going to preordain and see if I can clean this up a better way. Inquisition of Kozilek fascinating. That gets them empty. I have to take a hit from Lelia. Or, if my plan is to Subtlety the Ravager, then that doesn't matter. The Lelia would be five. I'd have to discard four cards. Let's go... One, two, three, whatever this is, four. And I just have a biggest psychic frog. Okay, Inquisition's gone. I will take the swamp. I think I should probably put subtleties on the hard cast next turn. Yeah, that was a a good series of pressure draws that they came up with. Frog, I would have to discard one, two, three, four to beat Lelia. If they draw any removal spell, I'm just smoked. I think I'm going to play the frog and just pass. I'm going to see what Lelia flips before I make a decision with the frog. Flipped Elspeth Knight Errant. Okay, they can't cast that unless they have a land, and I could subtlety it if they do. Uh, I believe I am just going to go to six here and try to get frog going. A little bit of a risk, but I'm here for it. Mystic Confluence is the type of thing that can clean up this mess. And Angie's Ravager has to attack. It discards their hand when it does. I am dead on board to Lelia at this point. Okay, I am going to subtlety this, and I'm going to pitch. In Mystic Confluence, works the next land I draw. Cryptic works the next blue I draw. I could also use subtlety to chump block Lelia next turn. Okay, I'm going to pitch Cryptic Command here. Yeah, that Mox Ruby, that Eerie, that Council's Judgment... They're one card ahead of my curve, and they are. They found interaction in the two spots they needed it. This has been a, a tight little battle. My Mox Pearl is my best draw at this point. They did put Ravager on top. Mox Pearl? Swamp. Okay, so I guess what I do here is Chump Lock, which will turn on Fatal Push, and then hope Mystic Confluence wins the game after that. They flipped a planes. Actually can play that one. Block. 
Oh, sick. They are Eternalizing Timeless Dragon. That makes my life so much easier. End step, Fatal Push, Lelia. Because now if I bounce the Timeless Dragon, it's just gone, and I don't have to figure out what I'm doing about this Angie's Ravager. Caracas, you fucker. That would have been a good draw last turn. Okay. Mystic Confluence Pass. And now I have to decide how much I'm going to respect Lightning Bolt or future haste creatures. And Gut, Broadside, Rabble Master. There's a lot of them. I would like to counter their spell. And, okay, that's not going to die. I guess I can't go to one here. I missed a confluence. Bounce that draw card. And if they go land Angie's Ravager, I just drew two cards. If their last card is Mana Tithe, whatever. Well, Darren Epicure. Glad I didn't go to one. I see the line. And they can clamp this immediately, or they could keep pressure on. Yep, clamping immediately. Okay, can we stabilize? Malcolm is nice. Caracas, Palantir. Begin the slow turnaround. Curtain, Baragoyf. I'm going to go top, top. Because they're going to mill at this point. It's too early. And then I draw a giant lifelinker next turn, and which is what I need in this universe. You know, they have Angie's Ravager and then two, two fresh cards, plus their draw step, blood token. Malcolm can loot away this polluted delta that I... It is access to red, but I don't really want to lose a life to do it. It's also wild that they've played four or five red spells this turn and one white spell and all of it off Mox Ruby. Okay, first mountain of the game has appeared. We're in the Glorybringer Bonehorde Dracosaur phase of the game now, though. And I'm worried about those. Blood Token can discard Angie's Ravager. Get that sick, sick value. This creature doesn't have haste. They did just get a full card worth of value rather than a loot, though. Crip Skull Clamp, not a legend, importantly. And step Malcolm, who I can protect with Caracas or untap with Caracas if I need to. I can attack, bounce, flash into block. I start by just attacking. Deck's full of high impact cards. It's got to find some of them. Seator's Proven Ground is not it. Okay, so here we have a real decision, kind of. I could play Proven Ground tapped. I think that's correct because Caracas, bounce Malcolm, replayed his three mana, Barragoyf's three mana. I have exactly enough to do all that, so I'm going to discard Blue to Delta. And then I'm going to play Barrowgoyf. 4-5 lifelink. I'm going to play Zeotaurus Proving Ground, which turns on my Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, wow. Uh, you want to take 11? I'm going to go top, top. Or 9. Yeah, I can count. Top, top. Yep, they're at 8. Turns quickly when it turns. I'd also put an enchantment in the graveyard. Goyf's bigger. It, this game's going to be about can they answer Barrow Goyf right now. Ravager has to attack. So them attacking doesn't indicate a trick or anything. It's just required. Which is interesting because they get to draw two cards when it dies, but they also give me five life. So, And they get the three cards. So they'll have a new five card hand after this attack. But I'll be at ten. If they just have nothing. If they have anything, I'm in trouble. I've also noticed a pattern just in magic player behavior where after you get nine balled by Palantir of Orthanc, you start letting players draw cards. Like this is the most expensive card in my deck by a lot. I'm built on ones, twos, and threes. But once you see something like that, it's like, oh shit, is there an Archon in there? I'm at eight. And I'm going to treat Palantir like it's Gem Day Tome for the rest of this game. Arena of Glory, that could change math. Two blockers, one of them has lifelink. Okay, the required attack. Let's see what gets discarded. Discarded Flage, wow. Okay, so they just have a modern deck. I'm going to block. Flage plus Arena is a combo, but I have Caracas, so... Remember when I took that really highly over other cards? Feeling good about that right now. They got five in their hand right now. Malcolm's untouchable. Barragoyf dies to Goy or Barragoyf dies to Bolt at this point. Dies to Flage also, and they can just shrink the Goyf. Okay, so Goyf got me up to 10, stabilized the situation, but might end up being a brick afterwards. I'm not going to bother to try to figure it out right now, but if they have two unique card types in their graveyard, just escaping Flage will kill Barragoyf, then they can deal the three to Malcolm. All right, not a thing. Redamage to Goyf, you're out of here. Thank you for your service. They're at 11. Five fresh cards in hand. 
I am going to bounce Flage in the end step. Let's just get rid of that. Got a looter for this swamp I just drew. Looted into Mox Pearl. Hate my life. All right. Uh, I'm going to discard. Is there anything where this matters in my deck? I don't have any white cards. It's just kind of do I want them to know I have Mox Pearl or not? But Swamp is a better mana source for me, so I will discard Mox Pearl. And then Palantir's got to do the thing this game. I'm now scrying three, which is really powerful. Oh, jack me, daddy. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Uh, all right. That is a five if they want to fuck around and find out. And if not, this is exactly the spot I was talking about where I said, this card's really good. Okay, Ardenvale Fealty makes a 2-2. I can beat a 2-2. Knowing Flage is in their hand. It'd be kind of sick if they just tap out for Virtue here. Like equip Skull Clamp, Bash Me, Jam Virtue. Try to set up a longer game. Because so I would jack that Virtue, and then I'd have Virtue, and then my creatures would be huge. Gotta watch out for that Arena of Glory, though. Flage is quite a ways away from re-escaping, though, unless they have another like wheel or Angie's Ravager effect, but I have the wheel. We've already seen Angie's Ravager come and go. Okay, this is a haste creature. Land drop. Okay, so landfall, this gets battle cry. That could be three, four, five, six damage this turn. This resolves. Now I hope they jam out some haste creature. Just tap out for some haste idiot. Let's go, let's go. Okay, there's the landfall. That does have one instance of battle cry now. Blage three unknowns in hand. Come on, shovel five drop. Show me the Dracosaur. Sarah Paragon. I will jack that so hard. Okay, they do have one red still floating. They could just equip Skull Clamp to a creature with that. Or if they have like Lightning Bolt, that continues to be a card I'm extremely worried about. Okay, this gains life somehow, right? Yes. All right. Well, they're attacking me for six right now. I would go to four. I'm attacking back for five, and I get to play Sarah Paragon, who can cast a permanent from my graveyard or play a land. There is a Pluta Delta there. I can just gain one life net there. I can also stick Psychic Frog, Tamio. Battlecry happens. I have to take the six here if they have Fire Blast. They don't even have two mountains. All right, yeah, I'm not getting Fire Blasted. I'm going to go to four. All right, deck. Big hits. That's not the big hit I wanted. I can still functionally untap Malcolm. I have to attack with this to cast the spell. Attack with my creatures. Cast Sarah Paragon. Malcolm's going to loot away Blood Crypt, almost certainly. True name Nemesis. A stable body on this convoluted board. Okay, I can play lands or cards from my graveyard. I know the Flage is in hand, which is three damage I have to respect at any given time. And it's just Barogoyf. It's just always Barogoyf. Giant lifelink, homie. And do I add the true name to the board? I think I do. And I'm not bluffing anything at this point. True name. Name you. Palantir of Orthonk. They have to let me draw. So this is basically scry four, draw a card. Or scry two. Right. It, you always scry two and then you mill some amount. Uh, I don't actually want Mana Leak anymore. Do I? No, I'll leave Mana Leak on top. If we get to my next turn, we're cooking. I mean, they have to burn me out here. We know they have Flage. If they have some way to get the last point, they got it. But I feel good about my board otherwise. Arena's exerted this turn. Dragon's Rage Channeler doesn't do it and ties up one of their red mana. All right, yeah, they're just clamping that, digging, emergency meeting. Their four unknown cards in hand outside of Flage would have to be Red Source Burn Spell. Which, I mean, Burst Lightning was pitched already. We did see Firebolt in the draft. Didn't see Lightning Bolt, but we're not going to see that. That's a high pick unless you open it. You're probably not seeing it. Maybe second or third pick in a late pack if the people opening it just aren't near red. But you're not going to see that. My opponent was four seats away from me. I would not see a Lightning Bolt that they would have seen. Ancient Tomb. That is a sudden burst of mana. Lage. Okay, you can put me to one here. You go up to five. And they are targeting me. Oh, Ephemerate! Uh, no, I have Caracas. That doesn't do it. Okay. Uh, they floated a white. 
I can beat Ephemerate with Caracas. Touch the Spirit Realm? Uh-uh. Caracas for the win, kids. That was a sick line, but I took this card highly because it's messed up. Okay. Caracas showed up a turn late to just make this a non-game versus the Lelia, but then it crushed Flage by itself. Okay. I think Soul Guide Lantern. Uh, Hazel's Brewmaster is also a large menace creature that makes foods. I'm not going to go like too crazy over just Flage being in the deck, but I do want to respect the fact that they have the, the Flage Arena endgame, and my deck does go long. So I never had three blue that game, which take the fixing truthers are are big mad about. And I mean, it's true. Like all of my opinions about pack one pick winning fetch lands, I'm not saying it's bad. Obviously, I would like one more hallowed fountain in this deck to really tie everything together or whatever, which I passed over some card from my deck, which made Crypt Command a blank, but I pitched it to subtlety. My deck's full of looters. It's fine. Hazel's Brewmaster, I want to make room for. Soul Guide Lantern, pops with Luris, but otherwise how important is that actually? When this enters or attacks, a Flage could dance around this. The question is the same question I had at the start of deck build, which is how good is Soul Guide Lantern with Luris if my opponent's not currently using their graveyard? I also played Barrowgoyf, and their cards helped me there. Okay, I'm not going to play Soul Guide Lantern. I am going to play Hazel's Brewmaster. Let's try it. Uh, this is a matchup, if there ever was one, where I would board in Path to Exile, but I think we just didn't get there on that, and I'm not going to put a blank in my deck. Just accept that it's not going to happen. I like this start. Keep. I get to take a look at that hand, and then decide if Caracas or Mana Leak is the best way to fight it. They did show me Lelia and a willingness to go all in on a Lelia game plan last game. That was before they saw Caracas. And if they have like land Mox Ruby 2 drop, I Inquisition them, and then they go land 3 drop, and then they just have 5 mana worth of creatures in play before I hold up Mana Leak, they're probably going to win. But if they have any sort of land go setup, period, this is going to be awesome. Sick. And now I have the Mana Leak you or deploy a threat option. Get in the chopper! Flage, Titan of... Fire's Fury. I could place that card directly into the graveyard so the first Lightning Helix doesn't happen. Or I could just make Smuggler's Copter not a thing. Because Chopper can get Flage into the graveyard directly as well. Chopper also fuels the Flage going long. Currently their plan is to cycle Timeless Dragon at some point. If they play Copter, they're not cycling Timeless Dragon. I don't want to have to worry about every creature they play for the rest of the game, though, with the Copter. I'm going to take that. And I'm just going to place a Island into play. This turn, I can save my Polluted Delta for Thundering Falls for a point where that's important. I guess them curing Copter and attacking with it would have fed Fairy Mastermind like a fox. But also, I just don't want them to do that. Okay, they've had two draw steps since we saw their hand. We know they have access to their third mana. Do I get to deploy a mastermind and go to town here? Okay. Yeah, they're just they're just helixing me. Deal. Let's put that in the graveyard. That is not what I'm trying to fight over. That's actually a really tight play because if I am just holding up mana leak, I don't want to mana leak that. They were right about that, but I had two things to do. So, got them. Okay, this turn and I'm definitely attacking. I'll just start by doing that. And I can decide how I want my lands to unfold here. I think I want to fetch the Thundering Falls this turn. Or I could just sit Caracas and play in case they rip Lelia. What I'd really like to do is play Psychic Frog next turn and then Mana Leak the Fury when they try to kill my whole board. Okay. They have Eternalized for that. That's their plan there. I'm going to get Thundering Falls. I like Subtlety quite a lot. Their hand is Fury. I'm going to play the Frog. I don't mind discarding some stuff. If they pitch cast the Fury, I can pitch Mana Leak to Subtlety to protect the squad, or I could just buff Psychic Frog out of range. But if they go land Fury here, Mana Leak's bananas. Banana Leak. I wouldn't miss the Proving Ground at all. 
if I have to discard it to frog. Okay, they pitch cast Dragon's Rage Channeler. So I have to go one, two, three, four. I discard Proving Ground. Don't really want to lose Caracas here. It's fine. Go ahead. Do your thing. I'll just discard the two lands, hold up Counterspell, Counterspell, moving forward. Sucks to lose a Caracas, but going all in on Psychic Frog is not something I mind doing. If they have the Touch the Spirit Realm, this is going to be bad. Wow, Burst Lightning. Okay, so they get my whole hand here, but Frog is the biggest thing on the board. This is three, four, five, three, four, five, six. Yeah, all right. All in. Okay. Please don't have the flicker as your last card. All right, Fury's in the graveyard. I have the biggest creature. Psychic Frog is so dumb. Look what just happened. Their turn was incredible, and it still wasn't even close to good enough. Oh, they're not done with spells yet. What's going on over there? Oh, they're just emergency drawing a card. If they find one more bird spell here, that would be so sick for them. No such luck. The curtains. Frog, yeah. Draw a card. Basil! Let's get that Flage out of your graveyard and generate a food token. Sideboard coming in big. Three in the pool. Council's Judgment, okay. Frog almost did its job. Well, it got a bunch of cards out of their hand. It drew a card back. It bridged the gap into Hazel. Okay, so this has other attacks. Foods you control have activated abilities of all creature cards with Brewmaster. What creatures have activated abilities in the graveyard right now? Fairy Mastermind. I can make both players draw a card off a food token. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm going to exile Fury in case they can get this back somehow. And then I'm going to place Baleful Strix between my life total and this 4-4. And I can gain 3 life at will. I feel like we're pulling ahead. Uh-oh, a 4 drop. I'll Smith Knight Errant. Okay, I mean, among cards they could have here, this one is not the worst. This is a steady supply of jerks. Okay, they don't have an attack. I am just going to gain some life. My menace creature now does lose the Timeless Dragon. Preordain. Figure it out. B -b 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 Big Barrel Goyf. Bottom top. I'm going to play this Swamp. And I'm going to attack Elspeth or Opponent. I don't have to attack with Brewmaster. They have 4 8 damage on board right now. Puts me to 3. Yeah, I could just drop out two creatures here. Yeah, I think not attacking is correct. And then Pharaoh Goyf, Curtains. I'm at 11. I have the Death Touch blocker. Voltaren Epicure puts me to 10, and they get a Blood. If they've been sandbagging Angie's Ravager this long, they're going to have a great turn. City of Traitors. So they have City of Traitors, Mox Ruby, and Ancient Tomb in this big Boros deck. Played out their land. Not hiding anything from me here. Whatever I get to do this turn will come with full information. Yo! I believe this specifically says, except it doesn't have a mana value. Yes, this is not a copy of Timeless Dragon. It is in the rules text of Eternal Eyes. Except it is a 4-4 zombie dragon with no mana cost. Okay. That's big if true. And it is true because... My opponent can't lie to me about it. That means my two Menace creatures will be difficult to interact with because they only have three 1-1 one -one blockers. I could make one of them just unblockable here, or I could set up a block that will be difficult for them to convert. I am just going to ignore Elspeth. She goes off at 8. I'm going to Fatal Push the Dragon and then attack their life points with everything. Exile Sunbay Canyon, I guess. Okay, two menace creatures, one giant creature, one flyer. They go to three. I'm at 15. They need something really good here. We got the GGs. All right, on to the next round. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in-store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. 
I'm on the draw for round two with most of my top end in hand, but also my best one drop. There's my Marsh Flats. Pack one, pick one, made it over to this person. Tamio is on the stack of Rooney. I know she's not getting Fatal Pushed because I have that too. Fatal Push, great draw, by the way. If opponent does start to curve out, if we see like a Caustic Bronco or something here, I am ready to answer it. Ponder. Okay, so we found the other blue player. All the cards, like I thought about Xander's Lounge, I thought about Ponder. No, well, Library is going to be hard to beat in a blue mirror. But I also have Library. It's Tamio. Same thing, right? I think drawing a raw card off clue is better than fetching my Thundering Falls at this time. So that's what I'm going to do. Consider, ponder. I wonder if they have a combo deck. There was a Thassa's Oracle in the draft and a... Oh, wow, they got rid of Blood Chief Thirst when they're facing down Tamio. They're not worried about her, is what I just learned. I'd love a discard spell that both slows down the library and I get to know what they're up to. Instead, we can blood out, though. That's cool, too. Now I'm ready to fetch for Thundering Falls. Okay, they have a lot of mana. Grip full of cards. No surprise there. Uh, I think I should actually crack my clue first, because if they have Hull Breacher, I could Fatal Push it. Okay, they didn't have Hull Breacher. A small percent of selection lost there to not get blown out by a phenomenal card. I don't think Virtual Persistence is what I'm looking for in this matchup. And already full of stuff to do. They're going to clean up. I might also go to clean up here if I don't cast a spell. Oh, that's a spell. Okay. Um, I could just discard Zeotaurus Proving Ground to hand size. Or I could play Barrowgoyf into their open interaction that also taps me out of subtlety. Yeah, I'm not feeding this library. I am going to just discard Proving Ground. And step necromancy. Oh, they discarded a grizzle brand. Shit. I didn't even notice that happened. I should have just played Caracas Desert. I literally that's embarrassing. Yep. I genuinely just did not see that happen. Well, sucks to suck me, you idiot. Okay. Um, I could still draw a counter spell out here. Draw with my clue. Uh nope. Uh well, this was a flash necromancy which makes it a little worse. They still get the Grizzlebrand for a turn, and if they're a combo deck, I'm dead. Okay, yeah, that was just blinked for a second, and information was different than I thought it was. That was bad. Oh, they don't get the Grizzlebrand for a turn. Okay, they just... It was just a draw seven. <laughs> Air quotes, just a draw seven. If I get comboed out here, I deserve it. But not playing the Krakus was not as bad as I thought. Why didn't they necromancy in combat? Why why did they do it like that? Why didn't they go to their turn and keep the Grizzle Brand? Yeah, like clearly setting up a combo here. Hopefully I could subtlety a shit. Well, I've tapped out of black. Uh if I lose, I lose. Whatever. Series of errors made here. But if they are a combo deck, I am quite good against those if I know that's what I need to solve for. Taking the push, interesting. That means they don't care about subtlety in their line. I hope that they're looking at the Caracas with reanimate in their hand and just thinking, son of a biscuit. That's what I want right now, because I've been on the receiving end of that enough times. Maybe I'm accidentally a genius for slow rolling the Caracas. Okay, never mind. Definitely not. Another Goyf, okay. So Grizzlebrand gets to clap me, and then they could draw seven more if they want. They could draw down to two cards in deck and go for a Thassa's Oracle, which I can't answer twice. Three seven. Chrome Mox. Yeah, they got a real vintage deck over there. Big zoom under the or entomb under the Chrome Mox. Grizzlebrand's gone. Now we have to play Fair Magic, where they are discarding seven cards to hand size. That's probably just seven entombs, and then it's Caracas versus the universe. And this Nether Goyf just chilling. Archon of Cruelty in the graveyard. <laughs> Not a legend. Notably. Oh, Bone Crusher Giant's pretty good, though. Okay, how do I want to handle this? I can play Caracas. I can clear the Nether Goyf, is the thing. When do I do it, is the question. Because I'm holding up this Spelljacker that they've seen. Do I want them to gain a life 
Or do I want to try to stomp the, the bat now? I don't think them gaining a life is going to break the game for me. Because the line here is stomp the bat, sack the clue, fatal push. Oh, I don't even need revolt. I can stomp the bat, nether, stomp nether goif, or push nether goif. Okay. I don't really want them untapping. Uh, okay. I'm going to... But if they have a counterspell, actual counterspell is in the draft, and I passed it, and this is the other blue player, and they've sculpted their entire deck. Just figuring out where to put this is going to be the important part. Snapcaster Mage. This can target Shallow Grave, and then I die. So I can't really... I'm not really interested in that. They must have an answer to Subtlety, because they know about all this. Can't really play around it. Okay, I will just cast my Subtlety. Memory Lapse, Subtlety goes to the top of the deck. Archon is good for enough here. All right, I'll see what they target, but yes, once you sculpt 21 cards, you should be able to find the line. I guess another way to play that would have been Stomp the Bat, but Memory Lapse still beats that. I don't have two removal spells. Okay, because they would have had to Shallow Grave the top creature. All right, that was a... Uh, just lost track of information, which you can't really do in these high stakes situations. And that is completely my own stupid fault for not seeing the Grizzle Brand. Okay. Virtual Persistence can steal monsters from their graveyard eventually. And we saw some stuff like Nether Goyf in play. My cheap interaction is very important. All my graveyard hate and my, my copies are coming in. My copies are maybe. My graveyard hate's all definitely coming in. Tamiyo was good. I don't have an out to Library of Alexandria. This is what it is. Skydiver might be mediocre. Actually, I don't think I need Virtue. If I'm spending all this energy exiling their cards from their graveyard, what am I stealing? I like Curtains. Push affects Bat. Strix can get in the way of a Grizzle Brand. Subtlety might be mediocre. We saw Snapcaster and Bat. Yeah, holding up subtlety just hasn't gone well for me in any of these games. Palantir might give them reanimate targets, but I think I'm okay with that. If they send a reanimate on a quick Archon, image can flip the script. I like that a lot. We did see things worth pushing. It might be true name here. This game's just not about fair combat. Okay, let's see if these sideboard draft options that I picked can hold up. Okay, I'm going to keep my hand, and I have to decide how I want to sequence this. I could just fetch for Watery Grave and play Soul Guide Lantern. I could just go Caracas Soul Guide Lantern, keep all my mana a secret. I could not play Soul Guide Lantern this turn, get the Thundering Falls, get a little card selection. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Caracas Soul Guide Lantern, just park this in play. Take the immediate pressure off, except they also have library on the draw. Kept a seven with library on the draw. Life is pain. I'm going to play Zeotor's Proving Ground. Just get that into play. I don't have any blue yet, and I have a double blue, triple blue card in my hand. But I could also just cast Bone Coaster Giant as 4 3 next turn and make them get out of the library. Chrome Mox, that's a good card with library. They could library right now in between this imprint trigger and get a card off library. Fit Shallow Grave. Show and tell, huh? This is what we're doing. Yuck. Okay. Uh, that is a, a powerful juke. I guess I will put in Baleful Strix and hope it's not Archon. Of course it's Archon. I think we're dead, team. Okay, I draw a card. Mox Pearl. Doesn't really help here. Never casting this Cryptic Command. Mystic Confluence could get up to the point where it bounces Archon. I think I'm going to Emergency Draw a card. Preordain. Okay. Strix gone. Bone Crusher gone. Okay. Got to find a blue source pretty quickly here. Blue to Delta, Fetch, Island, Preordain. Neither of these are blue sources. Hecate Soul Cauldron insulting me. Brewmaster insulting me. Palantir of Orthonk. I need a blue source to bounce Archon, and then maybe we can continue playing, but we're still just behind against the library deck. Okay, top, top. I found the blue card, or blue source. Unfortunately, we know that their deck contains Memory Lapse, which means this might not even work. 
I'm going to discard Cryptic Command, I guess. I think Brewmaster is more likely to get me back in this game if anything does. Because I've used my Lantern and burned off my Soul Cauldron already. They use their library. Marsh Flats. Draw for turn. I'm going to let Palantir resolve. See what happens here before I start casting spells. Okay. Uh, bottom, bottom. Don't want either of these cards, and they're not going to kill my opponent. They took six, which is not that much. If I just pass, what happens here? I'd like them to fetch, but I don't think they're going to. All right, I guess I just bounce and draw two cards. No, I'll pass. If they have the, the memory lapse, they win. Okay, uh, attack is lethal, so by waiting, we did buy a situation that three mana counter spells aren't live. But if they just have the laps, we lose. Okay, I mean, that happened. Snapcaster Mage in the end step. Targeting show and tell, so they're just applying pressure with this. They have, like, some haste idiot to do another five, they win. <laughs> this is so bad. There's Swamp. Library. We know they have Entomb and Necromancy in their deck, at the very least. I can only cast one of these two black cards right now because I had to frantically get blue mana. Either going after Grizzlebrand, the Shallow Grave is currently under the Mox. So they can Necro and draw a bunch, but this is a legend if they don't have like a haste enabler or a combo kill of some kind right now. Okay, Snapcaster puts me to five. Let's see what the cleanup step brings. I have the subtlety. I didn't see the force of will. Okay, Jace Wielder. So they do have a empty my deck gear of their their plan. Hazel's Brewmaster activate abilities of creatures, not of everything. Okay, so Brewmaster doesn't actually help right now. If they're we saw Dark Ritual game one, they might just cast Arc on this turn, which does kill me if I don't Brewmaster. Oh, I, it kills me if I Brewmaster, too, so I should probably just play Barrowgoyf. Because I don't have enough mana to crack the Grizzlebrand and crack the food. Okay, Barrowgoyf. I play my land because I still have a Palantir trigger. I don't think I have cards left in my deck that add up to 10 uh, on this mill if they decline the draw. Bottom two lands, that's for sure. Okay, they gave me Malcolm. That's a surprise blocker. Or surprise sacrifice to Archon. I'm waiting on the Grizzlebrand because I, I don't even care if that gets sideways in combat. It Everything it does, it can just do. So, like, bouncing it where they could Faithless Looting, Corpse Dance it or something is not a line I want to open up right now. And if they go land Dark Ritual Archon, I flash out Malcolm. They eat that instead. Maybe Barrowgoyf can make something happen. If Barrowgoyf connects and Hazel Brewmaster eats Grizzlebrand, I can draw seven off of a food token. That's not nothing. There's also not currently an enchantment in the graveyard, which means when I bounce Grizzlebrand, Barrowgoyf will get bigger. So I have a, a combat trick here too. Pseudo combat trick. If I somehow make it to game three, I will be boarding in my path to exile and figure out how to use it because the show and tell Archon line is just so devastating to every plan that I have. And I have two discard spells and like four or five counters, but they do have to work. All right, well, that's frustrating, but not devastating. You're attacking, obviously going to bounce Grizzlebrand. Opponent went to three. I could block this Snapcaster. And if they have Lightning Bolt, whatever. Or do I just want to stabilize with them at three? How do I get one more damage, though? I don't think I do. Not a thing that my deck is very good at. Where is my deck? I mean, they're just going to let me draw for Palantir from now on. Bonecrusher Giant's already gone. Uh, do I want to block this? I think I want to demand some sort of interaction. Okay, fine. We got a spell out of their hand, where otherwise we were not going to do that. Now I'm at three, which means... Archon's arrival is GG. However, I have six mana to play Brewmaster and gain three life. They are showing me the memory lapse. 
or representing the memory lapse that I know they have. It also just play out two creatures, but that hardcast archon is just looming. I'd love to draw miscalculation still in my deck. That's my last counter spell. If I find that, the hardcast archon becomes not only less of a problem, but actively a joke. Oh god, they just discarded counter spell on this board. <laughs> well, I don't know what card you want that's better than counter spell. They must have mana drain. It's so messed up. All right, well, I could lead on Luris here, who plays Soul Guide Lantern, and then I can still Psychic Frog. None of that solves my hardcast Archon problem. What if I lead on Psychic Frog? Which of these things would I prefer to happen? Luris has Lifelink. Really, none of this matters if they just have Dark Ritual. In the Brewmaster, if I thought it was anything was going to resolve, it's Brewmaster, but I don't think anything's going to resolve. Shallow Graves use the Grizzlebrand is the top creature, but that's gone. Warp Stand's still in the cube. Okay. Um, Psychic Frog. Black Blue. This can block a flyer if that flyer is not Archon of Cruelty's trigger. I really just need them to panic and cast some spell and then be wrong. Mana Drain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is enough. Well, I have no outs now. Um, I did identify Mana Drain, but I was also not in a spot to not cast a spell. All I can do now is... Yeah, it's miscalculation. Yeah, all I can do at this point is hope that my Scry 2 comes up with the miscalc. Yep. All right. Come on, Palantir. Don't fail me now. Fatal Push Island, bottom, bottom. Top card is Water Grave. We've lost. And this is what I was talking about in the draft. This strategy, the ability to just shove a monster into play, is clearly the best thing to do in the cube. Not that other archetypes aren't viable, but if you can build a coherent deck that could also just make Archon of Cruelty sometimes, then that deck is going to be better than decks that don't do that. Just full stop. The show and tell pivot was so fucked up. Just keep seven, Library of Alexandria, turn two show and tell for Archon through a face up piece of graveyard hate. I did what I could here, at least in game two. Okay, great. Uh, now they don't even have to cast the thing because they just have me dead. Uh, this is just draining me for two life. This Snapcaster is going to get through. All right. GG. Okay. That was this outing. Here is my deck one more time for the road. I think this deck is strong and coherent. The curve looks really good on paper. The choice to play Cryptic Command over Soul Guide Lantern or Hazel's Brewmaster, probably Soul Guide Lantern, is a decision. I think that's the last one that could be really argued in terms of how the games went out. We saw me uh, keep a one lander on the draw versus Boros, who curved out and drew perfectly, and we still beat that deck. But then we lost to the reanimator combo deck that also led on Library of Alexandria both games. But we made the game competitive even after getting Archon and Grizzle branded. Like it was still like we were drawing cards and making decisions well after that point. Some decks are just better than others, and my opponent's deck was better than mine. But I think I put myself in a position with the decisions I made in the draft to fend off something like that, knowing I might play against it. And unfortunately, my sideboard was not ready for turn two show and tell. It was ready for turn two reanimate. And this is all we get. Single elimination. I'm playing another one of these tomorrow, so there will be another video in the future on the channel. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.